Good evening. Welcome to the Canby City Council regular meeting for October 2nd, 2013. If you will please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please you stay standing for a moment of silence? Thank you very much. We have a lot today, full agenda this evening, and uh, we've already, uh, as a group, have been at it uh, since six, going over some um, stormwater master planning, and we'll get into that later today. So, um, but we will move into a couple of proclamations. The first one is the walk and bike to school day. Whereas for more than a century, the bicycle has been in you utilitarian, pardon me, economical, environmentally sound, and effective means of personal transportation, recreation, and fitness, and whereas the city of Canby encourages the use of bicycles and walking as a means of transportation, and whereas the city of Canby recognizes the bicycle as a legitimate roadway vehicle, and therefore is entitled to legal and responsible use of all public roadway facilities in Oregon except highways constructed to interstate standards, and whereas the city of Canby encourages the increased use of the bicycle and walking, benefiting all citizens of Canby by improving air quality, reducing traffic congestion and noise, decreasing the use and dependence upon finite energy sources, and fostering physical fitness. And whereas the city of Canby recognizes the use of bicycles and walking as viable modes of transportation, endeavors to promote safe and responsible bicycling and walking, and is committed to incorporating the development of bicycle and pedestrian facilities in the vision of revitalizing downtown Canby, and whereas the City of Canby's Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee and the Mayor encourage all citizens to ride their bicycles or walk to work, to the store, to the park, school, and around their neighborhoods with friends and family and neighbors to promote the personal and societal benefits achieved from bicycle, bicycling and walking. Now, therefore, I, Brian Hodson, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Canby, do hereby proclaim the second Wednesday in October, October 9th, 2013, as walk and bike to school day in the city of Canby, and do urge all those in Canby area to support and promote this observance, given unto my hand this second day of October, 2013, in the city of Canby, Oregon. And we have somebody here to accept said proclamation no All right. mr mayor I'll, as a liaison to the oh. committee i'll be happy to Perfect. pass that along to them thanks thank you sir the second proclamation that we have tonight is regarding manufacturing day and this is the second annual celebration of manufacturing day in our community um, there are we have over 40 manufacturers in canby that drive our economy and i want to thank all of them for our, their contribution investments and well-paying jobs that you provide to our community we greatly greatly appreciate it so thank you um, so with that the proclamation uh, manufacturing day whereas manufacturing significantly contributes to the national state and local economy and whereas our community is fortunate to be the home of many world-class manufacturing companies and whereas manufacturing companies bring vitality and prosperity to can be providing career opportunities and investment and whereas the community wants to introduce as many people as possible to the important role played by manufacturing. And whereas Canby's manufacturers benefit from Canby School District efforts to prepare the current and future workforce through training, job shadows, and other programs. And whereas October 4th is dedicated to celebrating the week, sorry, celebrating the great work and innovation of the men and women who contribute to Canby's strong manufacturing economy. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Brian Hodson, Mayor of the City of Canby, do hereby proclaim October 4th, 2013 as Manufacturing Day in Canby, and urge all citizens, citizens to join in recognizing the value of our manufacturers and the importance they serve in our community, given under my hand the second day of October 2013 in the City of Canby, Oregon. I think we have a couple of gentlemen from Package Containers here. Well, yeah, we, uh, 
we really appreciate this. It's nice to be recognized by uh, by the community that we've um, you know where we've been here a long time. Um, not. Roland and I personally, but <laughs> but the company itself has been here for quite a while, and uh, we we uh, like that we can like to believe that we can contribute uh, even more to the community. We are um, undergoing some expansion, so we are we're looking for some qualified uh, operators and some machinists and mechanic types. So if you guys know of anybody like that, we'd love to have you send them our way, and we look forward to having as many of you guys as, as possible to the uh, to the tour on the night. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I've been with the company for three years now, and uh, uh, what, I, what I liked about the company is walking around the plant and seeing the looks in the eyes of the, the, the folks working out there, making our product, and they're looking in the eye, and they're smiling, and they're thanking you, and uh, it's just a, it's a good feeling. Uh, as John said, we're, uh, we're on a growth, growth mode, and we're, uh, we have about 45 people that are, live in the community, uh, anywhere from Milano to Oregon City. A lot of them are can be. Um, there's towns that I hadn't even heard of before that are uh, where our people live and it's great it's a local community and I, I really enjoy the, uh, the where we've been and where we're going so appreciate the recognition well, thank, thank you, you guys thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I've had the opportunity to visit with you guys and, and tour package container and it sure. is a an amazing facility and uh, you guys create a tremendous amount of different and unique bags that all come out of Canby and so we really appreciate it and and you're not, you know, mentioned the, uh, the growth that you guys are experiencing, and that seems to be pretty prevalent amongst manufacturing right now here in, in Canby and as well as Oregon. So you guys are not the only ones looking for um, high qualified people to keep, keep it going. So thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, they mentioned on October 9th there's going to be um, tours going on. So the high school <coughs> students will have an opportunity to visit some of the businesses um, here in town. Uh, they'll be able to go to JV Northwest, Package Containers, uh, Potter's Industries, American Steel, Pioneer Pump, and then um, Product Manufacturing. So that's going to be a great opportunity for the high school students to get an opportunity to see what some of those businesses do and what opportunities are available in the manufacturing field. So uh, I want to give a big thank you to Bev Doolittle, our Chamber Director, uh, Jamie Netter, and Todd Roberts, Roberts, pardon me, from Canby High School, Kim Parker with Workforce Investment Council and then Renata Mangelberg from our Economic Development Office for putting that together and keeping this this going. I know we have hopes to turn it into Manufacturing Week and hopefully Manufacturing <laughs> Month. So would be I think as our long-term goal. So we're good. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank Appreciate you. Thank you. It. Thank you. Thank you. Bev. Um, my name is Bev Dool. I'm the Executive Director of the Canby Chamber of Commerce. And the purpose of this day is to highlight the importance of manufacturing in the nation's economy and draw attention to the many rewarding and high school family wages available in the manufacturing jobs. One of the challenges for manufacturing is to improve the image of manufacturing as a viable career option. Studies by the Nonprofit Manufacturing Institute and others show that almost 80% of Americans believe that manufacturing is important to our economy, prosperity, standard of living, and national security. Yet only 30% would encourage their children to go into the manufacturing career. Manufacturing drives value creation, innovation, and employment throughout the country. Longtime Canby employers are among the high-tech businesses here in Canby. These businesses employ over 600 um, employees and generate an annual economic input of over 164 million into Canby. And that's just a few here of the high tech businesses that we have. This year we've partnered with the Canby High School and there we, as the mayor have said, a group of students that will be attending six of our local businesses, seeing firsthand what they have to offer. We hope to show our future workforce the opportunities available in the manufacturing today. Our future depends on our ability to strengthen and advance this vital sector. Being able to provide trained, skilled workforce is important to our businesses and to our community. With that, I'd like to introduce a um, teacher here, Mr. Todd Roberts, and he <coughs> teaches um, multiple levels of manufacturing and pre-engineering, and he also teaches transportation and technology and design at the Canby High School. And he is here to share with you just a little bit more about what he's going to t bring to the students that are going to be going to <coughs> businesses. 
Thank you. Um, this has just been a great opportunity for my kids to get out and see businesses. I can talk manufacturing, I can teach manufacturing, but for them to get out and visit sites where it's actually happening, it, it really turns some you know, lights on for kids. They go, wow, I didn't know this was available, or I didn't know this what, was what manufacturing is about. Um, the other thing is that behind the scenes, it also helps direct my curriculum. Um, I could change uh, and adapt to what's going on with things that are happening in the community. So that is the other kind of unseen thing that, that I'm taking back with me. Um, but it's a great opportunity for students, and I think we're having probably between 50 and 60 students go to these uh, local companies. And the connections that we make, uh, you know, are invaluable. So great opportunity for, for the high school. Thank you. With that, we thank you very much for um, your proclamation this evening, and we just want to say thank you to our local businesses, and we're proud to have them in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Next up on the agenda is the swearing in <coughs> of a new city councilor. So I'll put that in the capable hands of Judge Graff. So, is there anyone here that's ready to be sworn in? As a <laughs> <laughs> Being sworn, being sworn, depose and say, depose and say, I am a qualified elector of the city of Canby. I'm a qualified elector of the city of Canby. I have resided in the city of Canby, Oregon, for not less than 12 months. I resided in the city of Canby, Oregon, for not less than 12 months. Immediately prior to the city council appointment. Immediately prior to the city council appointment. On September 18, 2013. On September 18, 2013. And I will support the constitution and laws. Now support the Constitution and laws of the United States and the State of Oregon. The United States and the State of Oregon. And will faithfully perform the duties. And will faithfully perform the duties of the office of the City Councilor of the City of Canby, Oregon. Of the office of City Council of the City Council Canby of Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> to which I have been appointed. To which I've been appointed. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Judge. Councilor. Good to see you. Welcome, uh, Councilor Roche. Thank you. Thank you for the first five minutes. It's been great. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Let's hope that the next uh, two hours is just as great. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you. Uh, communications. No, no. All right. Our first opportunity for citizen input and community announcements. So if you're interested in have something to say, uh, please uh, fill out a yellow card and uh, we'll see that that happens. The uh, first one is John Sterlett. I see John sneak out there. We'll come back to him then. Miss Doolittle. Good evening again. A couple weeks ago, I was here um, letting you know about the um, community partnership grant that we had, the $20,000 that we um, made, was made available to us from the county to give to organizations and to help with um, tourism in our community. So we had a total of 12 applications come in and with um, asking for over $51,000 worth of um, funding and we only had 20 to give. So it was two hours of going through all of the projects and looking at them and making sure that they matched what our goals were and what the regulations were with the county in coming up with um, some kind of funding for them. And so that's what we did. We spent our time and not all of them have been notified. Otherwise I would tell you who they all were, but um, I wanna wait and notify them ahead of time. But um, 12 was a lot of um, programs to come up. So, and one of them happened to be um, when the 
Boy Scouts were here was the evening that I did the presentation and one of the fathers had an idea and put in an application for it. So he had heard about it here at the council meeting. Mm -hmm. So it was good. Um, this is the most that we've ever had requested. The most applications, you know, funding requests coming in. So it was good, but it was sad not to be able to fund all of them. Yeah. So that's where we're at. We'll move mm -hmm. forward with it. Great. Thank you, Beth. Thanks, Thanks for that. Yes. Another subject. Sorry. Yeah. Since you're there, isn't Shred Day tomorrow? And do you want to Shred tomorrow? Day is tomorrow, <laughs> and it's going to be sunny and 70. Yeah. 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 Our phones have been nonstop for the last week here. Well, actually, for the last two months. Um, Shred Day from noon to five at the fairgrounds event center parking, in there, and um, we expect people to start lining up about 11, 11.30 to get in line early and to come in. So you can bring um, all your electronics and um, cell phones and hearing aids and batteries and everything down there and they shred it right there on site. So it's a great opportunity, a great thing that we provide for our community. Yeah, there have so. been uh, people from Milwaukee, Oregon City, oh, yeah. Uh, Woodburn that drive in. We had over 400 cars go through in April. Wow. And that's the slow shred day. No, April's the big shred, shred day. April day. October, but October is quickly, I think, catching up with what the April is. So. Is it still limited to two small boxes? You can bring as much as you want. Your first two are free. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah, and then it's donation, and donation basis after, after that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so. That's a great service. And we don't measure the boxes. <laughs> so, somebody called and said, "What size? You what know, size? What are they?" It's like I don't care. Just what bring it. And they wanted somebody wanted to shred dirty money. Dirty money today. He wanted yeah. to know if I wanted any of his dirty money, and I said I'd take all he had to give. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank so, you, so, yeah. Thanks, Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Mr. Patton. Well, good evening, Council. My name is Jason Patton. I live at 1040 North Birch Street here in Canby. And I wanted to apologize for not being able to be here at the last meeting and take this opportunity to congratulate you, Mr. Rocha, correct? Perfect, exactly. I was like, oh, I was worried there um, on your appointment to the Council. I did want to take an opportunity to kind of explain what happened. It seemed a bit flaky. But um, after I had submitted my application, I was scheduled to go to a forestry conference in Moscow, Idaho. And so I had all intentions of driving the seven hours from Moscow to here to be here for the interview and then drive the seven hours back that night to be there for the conference on Thursday. But by the time the bus got back from the nursery tours, it was too late. So that is what it was. To every black cloud, there is a silver lining. This does allow me to now join the Novice League for the Evergreen Curling Club, and so I will be pursuing my curling dreams from this point on. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. We appreciate it. What wish do you give someone for curling? Yeah, what's your good luck wish in curling? It's I'm not quite sure yet. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> every young boy's dream, I guess. Uh, yeah, sounds fun. Well, thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. Um, last but not least, uh, Mr. Sherlett. Well, good evening. Uh, my name is John Sherlett, and I'm a Canby resident since 2007. And I've been uh, selected to be the newest member of the Planning Commission. So it was requested that I come down tonight and introduce myself uh, to this council so you know who my face is. And I'll entertain any questions if you have any, so. What made you to decide to jump into that? <laughs> you know what you're getting in for? No. <laughs> no what, what, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself as far as your interest in volunteerism and the community. Okay. Uh, I bought an old house here in Canby up on uh, 710 Juniper Street in uh, 2007 I've been remodeling it since then and uh, it was in pretty bad shape uh, but I, I love old uh, buildings and whatnot and history and uh, so I'm also a member of the uh, historical review board here in Canby and uh, I found out there was going to be a, an opening on the uh, uh, planning commission and I thought that would uh, fit very well with uh, sitting on the uh, historical review board uh, my interests are um, obviously remodeling. <laughs> um, 
I like uh, old uh, antique automobiles, not too antique, 60s and 70s vehicles. Um, I love gardening and uh, just uh, kind of tinking around the place. I have a half acre, it's uh, two lots, so it gives me plenty to do with a large garden and lots of trees and bushes to take care of. Um, retired from federal civil service and military and UPS. After I got out of the, my big job, I went to work for UPS for 12 years. And uh, so we get a small stipend from them. Uh, I guess that's kind of where I'm at, so. Great. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I was just going to say, uh, John, uh, I got to interview with the mayor and uh, our planning director, uh, Brian Brown, and our uh, commission chairman, Tyler Smith. And I uh, just wanted to say how much we appreciate your willingness to serve in this capacity. And we could certainly tell by visiting with you how much you care about Canby. And one of the comments that stuck with me was you wanted to make sure that Canby doesn't turn into Gresham. And uh, I appreciate that uh, very much. And uh, so we're looking forward to having Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Councilor Parker. Yeah, I'd like to thank you for volunteering. I, I've said for years that the Planning Commission is probably the hardest work, uh, even more difficult and more reading than we do here, so I appreciate that. Also, I want to compliment uh, uh, the Mayor or, or Clint, whoever it was to, that you suggest to, to appear here, because we've gone through a number of appointments and have not met the person, so I, I like this idea, if we could uh, continue this on. So it gives, we, we, we have a application here from someone we're going to appoint to a board or commission. It's great to see you. So thanks for showing up. And thank you, Mayor and Clint, for whoever came up with the idea to have them show up. Thanks, John. Very good. Yeah. I agree. It's nice to have a, a name to go with, a fa or face to go with yes, the name right. and to know a little about you. So yeah. welcome on board. And yeah. thank, thank you. And thank you for your service to the country. Mm -hmm. um, have you had a chance yet to connect with Brian Brown about duties and get your, was it three or four binders that he'll have? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, but I right. will. All right. <laughs> well, John, thank you for coming thank and you, John. introducing Thanks. yourself and for uh, signing up for this important role. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll move into mayor's business. I got a couple of things here to go over. Uh, first off, I just want to uh, we have an, an unfortunate announcement that we have some changes in our leadership team um, that's going to be occurring. Uh, our library director, Penny Hummel, has uh, decided to move on uh, to other opportunities, and I, her last day will be October 7th, so I wish her all the best. I know she will do great things where she's headed, and she's done a lot for our library and our community in the four years that she's been here, so uh, I do wish her all the best in, in her next endeavor. Um, she will be missed, and it'll be a, a void and be a tough position to fill, so uh, thank you to her and for all that she has done. Um, uh, last week uh, met with, this is for the council, but last week met with Amanda, uh, our HR manager, Amanda Ziver, to plan our course of action for um, soon, uh, the new city manager position. Um, Greg has announced his retirement, so we need to, we'll be starting to look at that process here at the beginning of the year, get through the holidays um, and start laying together the framework on what we want to do and, and timelines that we want to work in and do uh, the League of Oregon Cities last weekend uh, at a mayor's round table. Uh, there were 10 cities that had either hired or were looking to hire a new city manager in the, in the course of the last three months. So um, there are, uh, it is a very competitive amongst the cities for finding great talent. So I would like for us to, I think January is a good time to get on it and get after it and see what we can get to fill Greg's position, not replace Greg. Oh. <laughs> All right. A um, couple of liaison changes or additions that I uh, would like to bring up. Um, Councilor Ryder and Councilor Coleman uh, have worked together and will be switching um, their some of their liaison roles. Councilor Ryder will be now the Planning Commission liaison, and Councilor Coleman will be the new library liaison. So if you gentlemen will uh, please contact uh, your respected board people and city staff members to get up to speed and or swap information that you have so that you guys can hit the ground running. I think Brian Brown, is there a planning commission meeting next Monday? Uh, 
we're still trying to decide on that. Okay. So I'm not quite certain yet. Okay, and I know that there's uh, the library board meeting is the seventh, but it sounds like we're going to have a joint meeting with. Um, sorry. That's the eighth. It's the eighth. Thank you. The eighth. Um, that we'll be doing a joint workshop with the library board and agency. So, um, and then uh, Councillor Rocha, with your addition, um, it sounds like you'll be. Uh, assuming the liaison roles for the Park and Rec Board and the Canby Adult Center. And I would like to add the liaison position um, of, uh, of a liaison to the fire district. Um, I know that you're the um, civil service commissioner to them and with some of the transition that's going on there, I think it, it'd be prudent that we have uh, at least some visibility in, um, on what's going on there and how we can help transition wise and with their business planning over the next couple of years. Okay. okay. Um, uh, last but not least, I was going to talk about Shred Day, but Bev took care of that. Uh, this is probably more of a staff recognition than council recognition, but at the League of Oregon Cities, our um, CIS is our uh, county insurance provider, and our city was awarded with the gold award for zero workplace injuries for the entire fiscal year. So congratulations to the city staff on being safe and all that, so maybe I'll give that to you to pass along for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. And that concludes my business. Uh, we'll start with Councilor comments related. Mayor, Mayor Hudson, yes. Um, we do not have a liaison to the Northeast Candy Neighborhood Association. We don't. And Mr. Mayor, at the last traffic safety commission meeting, I was asked for that replacement would be. So there is a desire to have a liaison in that area. Okay. I missed that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, uh, Kim, what was the. the back page. The Northeast Camby Neighborhood Association. Is there, okay, thank you. Um, is there a, an interest in that part of town that somebody would like to be the liaison to? Where does that area cover? Exactly? That would be your neighborhood. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. very, very smooth. Just if it's not the part of town you live in, it is now. <laughs> there you go. Okay, you have so to find thanks, out. Kim. Uh, thank you, your Councilor Coleman, for taking that on. Yeah. appreciate it. That gives all the neighborhoods coverage. Thanks, Kim. Uh, we will start uh, with uh, liaison and counselor comments. We'll start at the other end and take it easy. We'll get uh, hot up to speed. So, Councilor Ryder, I'll let you go. No All right. No Thank you, sir. No, Councilor Parker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got three reports, and so I'll use notes today, actually. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, historic review uh, has a, a guest speaker coming up on uh, this October 7th, as I believe. And uh, the Historic Review uh, Committee is, is really taken off and it has, has a sort of excitement to it. it. And it fits in well with the city's uh, Main Street program, it has the same, same liaison and same manager. But it, 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 historic preservation is good for business. Uh, and it's, it's, it's uh, as we take care of our downtown and our buildings, uh, we help our economy. Um, on that, uh, the, again, an economic element is the uh, Bike Ped Committee um, is working on uh, some uh, bike routes that it can promote uh, to Portland uh, bicycling clubs. Uh, think of this as uh, ultra mini uh, bicycle Oregon, but there are there are small bicycle clubs that pick up and move around to different parts of the state on the weekend. And uh, the idea is uh, to send up a, a route, and uh, maybe uh, uh, Canby can even get to the point where it, it's self-sustaining that we can afford a porta potty out on a road or something like that. But uh, one of the first ones we're targeting is a, a women's cycling club that has just about the right number of members that could come in here and, and stage maybe at the fairgrounds or at one of our parks and, and do a loop. Again, the idea is that uh, it helps with economic development. And then finally, in terms of uh, the Main Street, um, our Main Street manager, Jamie Sickle, is uh, at the Oregon Main Street Conference in Astoria, uh, getting some good ideas from a city that has done some amazing redevelopment, which in turn has helped its economic development. 
Uh, I'm hoping she's going to come back uh, with some detail of their uh, new brew pub uh, that went into <laughs> a historic building and uh, maybe get some ideas for that. <laughs> uh, Councilor Parker, you had mentioned the guest speaker for the Historic uh, Society. What is this? Who's the speaker and what's the date? Uh, it's the, I have the, I don't have the speaker with me. It's uh, 6 p.m. on October 7th and it'll be in our development building. Great. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Mr. Mayor, uh, my liaison report from Canby Utility is that the Knightsbridge substation is well on track for delivering power to Canby in November. If you've been by there recently, you've seen uh, very, very tall poles go in as PGE has been working down there to do the switchover, and that'll start saving ratepayers hundreds of thousands of dollars per year. Uh, Canby Utility also just recently concluded an interesting conversation program. They received money from BPA and uh, ratepayers uh, can sign up to have uh, a team come in and replace incandescent light bulbs and old style shower heads with CFLs and low flow uh, shower heads. And some interesting statistics over 2,000 light bulbs were replaced and 50 shower heads uh, for a savings of 55 kilowatt hours uh, on average, which works out to be about $3 a month. Uh, for those that participated in that program. And they've received word that BPA will be funding that the next two years. So if you want to get some free fluorescent light bulbs, stay tuned for next year. The program will be back. Uh, as you know, if you've received your power bill, the new power rates are in effect. And Canby Utility is moving forward on their new five-year master plan. Uh, Bob Cornelius, chairman of the board, is in the audience. Was that our largest packet ever? 500 and some pages if it had been all printed out. The largest one since I've been on. There we go. <laughs> and so interestingly, uh, along with that 500 page packet, Canby Utility is now starting to explore, and they're ahead of us, electronic delivery of their packets and information. So <laughs> <laughs> nothing like a ream of paper Rima per person paper to help out there. Person. But uh, yeah, they're moving forward with that, and that concludes, Mr. Mayor. Great. Thank you, sir. Mr. Coleman. Mr. Mayor, uh, I'm liaison to the Traffic Safety Commission, uh, which meets on the first Friday of each month, uh, which would be this Friday, but uh, it's been rescheduled to uh, next Friday, the 11th at 8.30 at the Public Works Building Conference Room. And then our outline under new business, um, actually the item that's issued there is a recommendation by our Traffic Safety Commission. So we'll be discussing that later. And, okay. And then tomorrow I will be attending a Canby Rodeo meeting. That's all Thank you, sir. Councilor Hensley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I likewise attended the League of Oregon Cities conference on Friday and Saturday for a very soggy weekend. It was good to be indoors, but would have been better to not have been in traffic. <laughs> Chamber luncheon yesterday, we were um, briefed on the changes in the health care and the school board meeting two weeks ago we had a lively discussion on the conversion to digital curriculum and more updates on that conversion plan um, will come as the conversation evolves and the plan starts to take shape our c4 meeting for tomorrow night has been canceled so i will be able to attend the school board's workshop tomorrow evening at the district office in the meridian room at 6 30 where conversation will continue, is expected to continue on um, another possible levy. So again, as the conversation evolves and details emerge, the report will come. That concludes. Great, thank you. And Council Rocha. I have nothing. All right. You'll see again. <laughs> That's your update. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. You'd be surprised if I did, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, you know what? No, I would not. No, I, I thought he'd make something up. I, yeah. <laughs> Thought about it. If you're an overachiever, maybe you've yeah. already attended right. a meeting. I, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, he went to the perfect. Reception. Thank you. So we'll move into consent agenda. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt the minutes of September 18th, 2013 City Council regular meeting, the appointment of John Surlett to the Planning Commission for a term to expire on December 31st, 2015, the appointment of Walt Daniels to the Transit Advisory Board for a term to expire on March 31st, 2014, and a change of ownership liquor license for 76 Food Mart of Canby. I'll second it. Thank you, sir. Familiar name on there for yeah. our uh, 
Transit Advisory Committee. He didn't come in to you know, familiarize himself <laughs> with us. The, uh, the, uh, the Walt Daniels. I think that's that. The, the infamous Walt Daniels. Daniels. The Honorable. There we go. That's <laughs> much better. Uh, so the motion has been made by uh, Councillor Dale and uh, second by Councillor Coleman to uh, accept the consent agenda, which includes the minutes of the September 18th, 2013 City Council regular meeting. Appointment of John Serlet to the Planning Commission for a term to expire on December 31st, 2015. Appointment of Walt Daniels to the Transit Advisory Board for a term to expire on March 31st, 2014. And a change of ownership liquor license for 76 Food Mart of Canby. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstain. That has nothing to do with the appointments. <laughs> no, I understand that, Council Ryder. Thank you, sweet. That passes 5 0 with one abstention. Thank you, sir. All right. So we'll move into uh, our public hearing this evening. Doing a public hearing on the uh, st street tree fee for new development. Uh, the matter pre presently before the hearing body requires a public hearing. Uh, all interested persons in attendance shall be heard on the matter. If you wish to testify on this matter, please fill out a yellow card, yellow comment card such as these, and give it to the city recorder. At the appropriate time, please step forward to the microphone, state your name and interest in the matter. Uh, those people that are interested in testifying as either proponents or opponents, please indicate your desire to speak by raising your hand at this time. Okay. For longer presentations, <coughs> proponents and opponents may buy time from one another. In so doing, uh, those either in favor or opposed may allocate their time to a spokesperson who will represent the entire group. All questions must be directed through the mayor. Any, any evidence to be considered must be submitted to the hearing body, for, hearing body for public access. All written testimony received both for and against shall be summarized by staff and presented briefly to the hearing body during the staff report. The public hearing will be conducted as follows. There will be a staff report. Uh, questions, if any, by the hearing body or staff. And we'll open the public hearing for testimony. We will hear from proponents, uh, then the opponents. We will close the public testimony. There will be further questions, if any, by the hearing body, and then discussion by the hearing body. Uh, a decision shall be made by the hearing body at the close of the hearing, or the matter will be continued to a date, to a date certain in the future. This will be the only notice of that date you will receive. Does anybody have any questions about the procedure of the hearing? All right. Seeing none, we will go into the staff report. Thank you, Mayor. And I believe Matilda Diaz is going to give that staff report. Great. Thank you. I just want you to know Matilda is on vacation. I am. She's come here. <laughs> <Can't you tell? laughs> this is the one I always do for fun. <laughs> well, thank you for. <laughs> doing that Matilda and I want to welcome Councillor Rocha because you are the liaison to the Park and Rec Board and your you. first meeting is going to be on the 15th Great. and we're looking forward to seeing you we have lots on okay. happening Park and Rec. <laughs> Sorry. Throw somebody out of there <laughs> anyway um, the street tree um, fee is is part of the larger package tonight that we're looking at which is an update of our um, uh, tree code, uh, our tree ordinance, and also um, our tree planting and maintenance policy. Uh, so it's the implementing piece. And a little bit of history on the uh, why we are proposing this uh, um, measure is that we used to do, we used to collect fees many moons ago in Canby, but we didn't really have a designated city forester to really kind of keep track of it. And so it became one of these things we collected fees and then and nobody was quite sure who was responsible for them and it got to be uh, a bit of a, a challenge for us and it was not very efficient or effective so we went to having um, requiring landscape plans when new development comes in and say now you take care of it and you you plant them but then of course what happens is they sell a lot and somebody else gets a hold of it and the you know, things fall between the cracks and so that wasn't very effective and efficient either 
So enter um, our city forester, which we now have a dedicated city forester, Saul Jacobson sitting back there. And he's our arborist. Hi, Saul. And so now we have <laughs> so now we have someone to actually manage this. And so we thought it's time to come back and, and do a more formal way of taking care of the trees. And this um, fee, uh, which we already um, developers already have to pay in a sense, they have to buy a tree and plant it. This way we just take the money. Saul kind of will uh, approve what trees where by our um, planting and maintenance policy so and he'll make sure he lets a contract out and oversees it so from beginning to end now we have sort of a tracking of that policy and we make sure that the right tree gets planted in the right place at the right time and we sort of manage that so that's what the fee portion that you're looking at tonight is so we have other things on the agenda a little bit later with our code so that's where this evolved from Okay. Any questions for uh, for staff at this time? No, at this time. No. Okay. Great. Thank you, Matilda. So I will open up the uh, public hearing for any testimony. Uh, any proponents to this at all? Seeing none. Any opponents that want to speak on the matter? All right. Seeing none. We will close the public testimony. And I will open it up to questions from uh, the hearing body. Thoughts, comments? Um, I, I will jump in, Matilda, then. Um, what are the some of the advantages or benefits to um, for, our, for our crews to be doing this versus the, uh, you know, the, the developers and their, la their landscapers doing it? Basically, so, basically, <laughs> what I mentioned was that we make sure that we get the correct tree planted in the correct place that we don't have interference with like utility lines we don't have the the wrong tree being planted next to a sewer line or something so we know kind of the infrastructure and we know where things should and shouldn't be planted where that gets even though we might market for a developer it just passes through too many hands and they get confused and then the homeowner comes in and they buy it and put it somewhere and it causes trouble later they come back to us and our crews basically have to go back out and deal with the improperly planted trees and then that creates unhappiness with homeowners because or developers because you know they have this big tree planted in the wrong place the wrong time so it really is more efficient for us and it's easier for us to actually make sure it's done right to begin with What's the, uh, so our fee is 200, do you know, what is the usual cost for a developer to buy and well, put in? Well, it depends on, you know, what size. We've actually reduced the caliper to an inch and a half. It used to be um, two inch caliper is what our current requirements are. And we're going to an inch and a half. And so you can get trees anywhere from 80 to $200. But the $200 salt thought would um, cover our costs for buying and planting a tree. So he thought that was an adequate amount of money. We talked about what that cost should be. So uh, we buy them. If you just went out to buy a one and a half inch caliper, maybe 80 bucks. But by the time you get it planted, it, you have to accommodate um, the cost of the labor. So okay. Um, it's a reasonable fee. I'll okay. say that. Probably lower end. And this will be worked into our, our fee sheet every year that we look at this? Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Yes, sir. Liability in the future, if the city's taking care of the trees and say 20 years from now, they start affecting sidewalks, who's responsible for that? Well, currently, and what we're proposing is the city maintains trees on arterials and collect a certain ones. If you looked at, I don't know if you looked at the policy tonight, but there's, it delineates uh, what trees a city will actually take care of. Uh, all the other trees on public streets are responsibility first of the adjacent property owner and they we have it spelled out and it's part of the reason why we had this new policy so people are it's very clear on what the responsibility is for the property owner but at any time if there's imminent um, chance of imminent harm or damage from a tree whether we're responsible or or the property owner is responsible we can come in and make sure it's taken care of but uh, so we take over some on our materials and collectors with with specific criteria that's listed in the policy 
Uh, otherwise, it's the property owners. But if they don't, we can still go in and have it done, and we have the ability to collect from them. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, I thank you, Matilda. Great. I, we will come back, I think, here in a little mm -hmm. bit to discuss the resolution. Thank you. All right. With that, uh, turn over to Kim for resolutions and ordinances. Okay. The first item we have is resolution 1174. This is setting fees for street trees required as part of a new development. And there was a typo in the copy that you have in your packet because originally we were going to, going to have this last council meeting, but that date has been changed on the correct version that you will sign. If Perfect. It's approved. All right. So that's uh, basically what we just had was, or what we have before us is what um, uh, Matilda brought us up to speed on. I will entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move for resolution number 1174, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Canby, Oregon, setting fees for street trees required as part of new development. Second. Great. So I have a motion by Councillor Dale and a second by Councillor Coleman uh, for the resolution of 1174, setting fees for street trees required as part of new development. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? That passes 6 0. Okay, Thank the you. next item we have is resolution 1175. This is adopting the stormwater master plan final report completed by Kennedy Jinks Consultants dated September 23rd, 2013. And Darvin Tremel is here to present this resolution. Uh, no, I was actually going to have Gordon talk about Kennedy Jinks. Great. Gordon, if you'd like to come to the microphone. Go up there. You can ask us questions. All right. So that was, uh, yeah, so the stormwater master plan final report uh, we're talking about. We had a work session on this earlier this evening, um, basically encapsulating the entire plan for hopefully the next 20 years and what projects we need to do and have to do and will complete. Uh, and I will then turn it over to you gentlemen. Okay. You want just a quick rundown? Uh, so we did the stormwater master plan because the last one was done in 1994 so almost 20 years ago so it's a little bit out of date uh, there's been regulatory changes there's been changes to your system your system's 20 years older and you got new parts of it so it was time to take a look at it and see whether it meets the new regulations and what condition it's in and if you had any deficiencies and how to fix them and so that's essentially what the stormwater master plan does. We document your system, we map it, we evaluate it, we look at its condition, and then develop uh, CIP projects to address any deficiencies that we find. And in general, uh, you have a pretty good system. Um, most of your system, probably 80, 90 percent of the city is what they call UICs underground injection control uh, just think of a dry well it's a manhole perforated and the stormwater goes down there and goes into the groundwater and we did what was called uh, protectiveness modeling uh, to determine which of these uh, UICs that we might have to do improvements on or decommission uh, without that modeling it, uh, the number would have been about 180 out of the 384 that the city owns. And with the modeling, uh, that's reduced to about 28. So uh, huge impact for the city. Um, and that's uh, dollars that you don't have to spend. So that was uh, a good outcome from the study. And we sat down with uh, operators of the system and I identified where we had deficiencies, where there was um, flooding occurring or where we had uh, potential for um, offset pipes or erosion and we also modeled the system to see where we had capacity issues and based on that we came up with 27 CIP projects and that comes up to about 5.68 million dollars over the 20 years so that's that's actually uh, a fairly small CIP there were seven high priority projects, nine medium, and eight low priority. 
And so the high priority projects we want to do within the first five years, medium from six to 20 and low priority from 10 to 20 years out. And there was three other projects that are uh, more ongoing. Um, so that is the kind of a brief review of the stormwater master plan. Great. Um, thank you for that, Gordon. The, I want to thank you um, and your company as well as Darwin and, and the number of city staff people. I know Matilda was part of that and a number of public works people for putting this together. This was not a, a small project and so I thank you for the hard work on that. There's some, uh, some great pieces here that I think will help out a lot. Um, can I say one more thing? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I do want to uh, <coughs> thank the city staff. This was a very collaborative study, meaning that Kennedy Jenks and our sub, uh, GSI, and city staff worked together as a team. Uh, Darvin and Jerry and Chris and, and Dan and Angie, they, they were invaluable. And so this is a, a study that's theirs as well as ours and one that they can support because uh, they had a lot of input on this. So I want to thank them as well. Great. Um, a couple of questions. I noticed in here that we do have some UICs that are on private property or county property. How do we, how do we address those and how do we ensure that those are being maintained by the private property owners? Uh, the uh, private UICs are there their responsibility. This study does not look at, at those. Okay. Uh, the ones for, uh, that are county owned, again, those are the counties. There, there are some instances here where it does affect uh, city uh, right away, and we have made some recommendations on how that can be uh, addressed, uh, but also there's a conversation between the county and the city that needs to happen. Oh, and it sounds like it will, too. So, great. Uh, any other questions for Gordon at this time? If you'll accept a motion now, yeah. Mr. Chair, um, I would like to move uh, approval of Resolution 1175, adopting the Stormwater Master Plan Final Report, completed by Kennedy Jenks Consultants, dated September 23, 2013. I'll second that. Thank you both. Mr. Mayor, as a comment, if I may. Sure. Um, tonight we saw the transition of uh, council liaison duties, and uh, for me it was uh, council liaison duties from former councillor uh, Robert Bitter. Uh, and I think it's important for us not to lose that where we are is the result of people who have come before us. Uh, when he handed off his liaison duties uh, of Main Street, uh, uh, to me and uh, he, he, he said take care of that and also take care of the, the uh, master planning for this project. Uh, it's probably in the whole public works world the least sexiest of very unsexy topics uh, <laughs> but when it comes to uh, flooding and uh, quality of our water uh, it's critical. So, uh, Robert, this is, this is for you tonight. Thank you for, for your work in pushing this. Great. Thank you for those comments. So the uh, motion has been made by Councillor Parker and seconded by Councillor Hensley to approve Resolution 1175, adopting the Stormwater Master Plan Final Report, completed by Candy Jenks Consultants, dated September 23, 2013. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, seeing none, passes 6-0. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you, Darwin. Appreciate it. Okay, the next item we have is Ordinance 1385. This is amending the Canby Municipal Code, Chapter 12.32, regarding tree regulations, adopting a street tree planting and maintenance policy, and adopting an official street tree list. And I believe Matilda and Saul are going to present this item. <coughs> Paul's well, going to be my backup here if you have super technical <laughs> stuff for me. <laughs> I'm just glad he's here. Uh, actually, there's only there's three parts to this. The first is the tree regulations, uh, chapter uh, 12, section, and 
basically the, it's rather intimidating looking with all the crossed out and red lined and everything else but what we did was we looked at a, a code that we really liked and that Saul was had been familiar with which was city of Beaverton and and we took that code and then we looked at our code and we sort of can be eyes that one and consolidated ours to um, bring our code up to date because we hadn't done anything with the tree code in a very long time and we've been talking about doing it <coughs> for a very long time so it was long overdue so Saul and I sat down and he did a lot of redlining and I glommed the two together and that's what you see before you even though it's slightly messy it's just in the end it's quite clear and concise trust me uh, and as you <laughs> if you can work through it <laughs> you will notice that it does refer on uh, several sections to our actually the very new uh, document that we have which is our um, city of Canby tree planting and maintenance policy and one of the important reasons we why we wanted to have a standalone document here is that there's been since I've been in the planning department anyway um, there is a lot of confusion about who does what, when, how, why, which kind of tree, where can it be planted, what kind of tree can be planted, how do you deal with it when it's diseased, what do you do in every condition, and we were all just sort of blah on the thing, so it was very important for us, for staff, as well as for the public, to have a document we can all look at and our city forester uh, is comfortable in implementing, and so uh, we looked around at various documents and, and um, put one together that we felt comfortable with um, and we um, referred to the transportation system plan arterials and collectors so that's also clear it tells you when you say what arterials and collectors well they're the ones that are in our transportation system plan that meet the criteria that uh, Saul went through thank goodness and sort of honed the arterial and collector mm -hmm. list to meet the criteria that we've come up with so basically for us, it's a, it's a document we can hand out to um, developers, homeowners, anybody asking about what do you do about street trees. It clearly defines who's responsible for what, when, how, and why, and it defines the city's responsibilities. Um, and it helps the planning department when people come in to sort of tell them what they're going to be, have to expect with street trees. Um, so that's in a nutshell is we just have wanted a nice policy document that says why we want this what you need to do, what kind of trees, and the, the third little leg is our tree list that we used to have. I don't know where it came from, but it was huge, and it didn't make a lot of sense to us, and we kept going, why we have these and not these, and it didn't really, uh, wasn't really specific as to which tree should go where, and what size tree, you know, what type of tree, so we went through that and kind of um, honed those down to lists that we thought they aren't exhaustive, and Sol does have uh, say so if somebody wants to come in with something that's not on the list he can sit there and be the arbiter of yes or no what type of tree but at least it gives a very clear list of trees that are acceptable to be planted where uh, and under utility lines or not so basically this is just a big effort to kind of clean it all up and make it clear and concise both for staff and for our, our community uh, Matilda I will say and to Saul um, sections 12.32 <laughs> and section or sorry 12.32.060 and 070 um, are great mm -hmm. I really appreciate um, the detail and it's definitely thought out I can you know <coughs> as Tim or Councillor Dale can attest to that there's been some tree issues <laughs> um, in some parts of town but I think that this is very Calvary. detailed and um, really cleans up a lot of uh, I can't say that I read the crossed out section but um, I, I do like what is here and I think it adds some some definite uh, teeth and substance to be able to control that because I know one area too that on South Ivy those arbovita that are along the sidewalks every year becomes a, a hazard for mm -hmm. those walking to and from you know uh, Ackerman and Lee in the adult center so no this is great thank you for the work on that thank you. Well, Mr. Mayor, if we're going to be talking about trees that we hate. Uh, <laughs> I like our I, you know. Just in, in, in my neighborhood, uh, we, we can never get over the fact that we've got these cruddy, fake 
cherry trees that yeah. drop these globby little blood-like cherries on the ground. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pleased to see that's, that's been removed, so all good work. And, and again, we should probably point out that thanks to your, your good work, we now have uh, an arboretum where we can travel around and see all of the trees that are on this list, which is a remarkable thing and enhances our ability to call ourselves the garden spot. So um, you rock, Saul. Thank you. <laughs> that was a collaborative effort. My coworkers put a lot of hard work into that as well. Thankful. Any other comments or questions on this at all? A few questions. Yeah, question. Yes, um, sir. Of all the lists on these lists of all these trees that I assume the homeowner has choices from these uh, that meets the criteria, uh, are you familiar with um, all the historical data on these trees as far as how they would affect sidewalks with their root systems, uh, the uh, curbs, things like that, that we seem to have problems around town with. That was the basis for the choice uh, in those trees. And I, I actually, at another city where I worked, uh, had these planted by the arborist prior to me. And so I, I saw them as established trees. And, and we've added and subtracted uh, where we didn't think they were appropriate. So I have got to, to witness uh, what they're capable of. And some of these trees were actually planted in spots that weren't probably appropriate for them because it's the room that they had the time to do it. So I got to see how they actually reacted in a spot where they should be as well. And I definitely have very strong opinions based on past experience with nearly everything on the list. And uh, that's, that's the basis they use for making recommendations. So the room that these will be planted in from now on uh, is going to be more than adequate. That is absolutely my goal. I don't ever want to leave someone else uh, a mess or a headache to deal with in 20 years. I've, I've spent the first part of my career dealing with that, and my goal is to spend the second half putting in the right trees so don't have to use it again. So. Well, I, I talked to some of the business owners on First Avenue, and, and there's been some concern about the trees and the small footage, square footage there, if this is going to eventually create